I have an office in the Capitol, uh, which is in the so-called Lincoln Room, named after Abraham Lincoln. That office has my name on the door, and it has majority whip above the door, and it's just off of Statue Air Hall. Anybody mm -hmm. walking through Statue Air Hall can see that office. Now, that's not where I do most of my work. Up on the third floor is where I do most of my work, and there are many members of the United States Congress right now who could not tell you where that office is and could not find that office, but they found it. Okay. Okay. Nobody touched the door uh, where my name uh, is. But they were on the floor, and my staff was inside my inner office uh, with furniture piled at the door, with people trying to get in that did not let them in. My question is, how did they know where that office was? What's the floor plan? What's the floor plan? There's a door to the right. That's a cop. Going downstairs, back flipping around. We need enough people. We need to push forward. Share Speaker Pelosi's concerns about Trump having the nuclear launch codes. That's literally what keeps me up at night. Does it keep you up at night? Yes, it does. But not just yesterday or this week. I've been feeling that way about this man for a long time. If you may recall, the night before his 2018 State of the Union address, I was on another network, and I said at the time, this man does not intend to leave office. He plans to install himself as an autocrat for the rest of his life. A lot of people gave me a hard time for saying that. I was even asked uh, by the host of the show, are you comparing this man to Adolf Hitler, and I told him, no, I wasn't. I was comparing him to Mussolini. I think that uh, Putin would be compared to Hitler. This man, is. I compare him to Mussolini. But the interesting thing about this, when he came out of the hospital and went up those steps to the Truman balcony and stood out over that balcony, looking out over what he imagined to be his subjects, the next morning, I saw two commentators referring to that as the a Mussolini stance. This man is an autocrat. He has no respect for the Constitution of the United States. He cares nothing about a democracy. It's all about him and his family. And I would wish that my Republican colleagues will get out down off their high horse and do what they can to protect this democracy. Hey guys, I've been in the other room. Listen to me. In the other room on the other side of this door, right here with Speaker Sandy, there is a glass that if somebody, if it's broken, you can drop down into a room underneath it. There's also two doors in the other room. One in the rear and one to the right when you go in. So, people should probably coordinate together if you're going to take this building. I've talked to several members today, uh, a few on yesterday, and they're telling me that they are being stopped by rank and file uh, Capitol Police telling us, please do an investigation. Something didn't go right here. These people uh, have been working hard to do their jobs, but they are not getting the kind of leadership from the top that's necessary for them to do their jobs. And they want us to look into it. So it tells me uh, that something is amiss. And that's why Nancy Pelosi asked for those resignations. She's now gotten the staff, I mean, the resignation from the chief uh, and Sergeant at Arms. Uh, and uh, we are going to get to the bottom of this. I'm not too sure uh, that we are not going to find that there is some, some information uh, being uh, passed on. I was also told by another member today uh, that her staff saw people being let into an office building by a side door, not through the door where the magnetometers are, 
but through a side door where there aren't any magnetometers, and that door had to be opened from the inside. So who did that? I think we're gonna find that those members who are on the floor uh, asking for insurrection, that speech made by Mo Brooks, we're gonna comb through that speech and we're gonna see whether or not he ought not be impeached because impeachment is not just reserved for the president. Uh, we can impeach uh, judges and legislators as well. The panic buttons in Representative Ayanna Presley's office were torn out shortly before rioters stormed the Capitol on January 6th, leading the politician and her staffers to question how and why it happened. The squad member's chief of staff, Sarah Groh, noticed the panic buttons were missing as she looked for gas masks during the riot and said she was deeply concerned about going to the Capitol that day because of all the violent rhetoric. With the help of staffers, Groh barricaded the office entrance with furniture and water jugs before being escorted to a secure location with Presley. Who exactly was leading the insurrection at the Capitol that day? It suspected one of those people was none other than Sean Roberts Bentz, mother of conservative House Representative Lauren Boebert from Colorado. Listen carefully to the voices in these videos and hear the similarities. Also note the person with the bullhorn has obvious knowledge of the interior layout of the building as she barks orders to move toward an inconspicuous glass panel below the floor. Hey guys, I've been in the other room with the chicken. She had to call me Snicky. You know who you look like? Who? Joan Rivers. Joan freaking Rivers. Does she look like Joan Rivers? In the other room on the other side of this door, right here where these deer are standing, there is a glass that if somebody, if it's broken, you can drop down into a room underneath it. And he cranks his up even louder. So I go and I crank mine up louder. And then he goes back and turns on the bass. There's also two doors. There's another door. There's one at the rear. There's one at the rear. There's one at the rear. Oh, I didn't ever guess that one. So, people should probably put that in together. If you're So, we're going to Junction today. So hopefully we'll find some more stuff to rant about. And I won't be signing autographs today. So quit. Tell me I look like Smokey. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more updates. Beneficence TV. Beneficence is beautiful.